Hello and welcome back. In this video, I will show you how to get started with the Gemini API in Android apps. We are going to build this simple application that allows you to write a prompt in the text input edit text. For example, I can say, what is open source? I can take this prompt, send it to the model just by clicking on the send query button. And then after a while, we will get the result. So as you can see, we got the result. Now you saw that, let me try to give the model something that will let it generate a lot of text so that we, we can wait. For example, I can say, give me a Java program that fetches dates the data from an API. You can see that while waiting, a progress bar will appear to indicate to the user that everything is working and he just needs to wait. Okay, so this is what we are going to be building in this video. To follow this tutorial, you will need the following prerequisites. First, the API key, which you can create from the Google AI Studio website. This is how it looks like. You just click, click on this button and then you are going to see the list of API keys you click on it, you copy it, and then I will show you where to use it. Second, the latest preview version of Android Studio Iguana. So you need to come to this website and then install the Iguana version because in order to be able to use Gemini, you need to use the beta version. All the mentioned sites are available in the description as well as the source code of this project. Now, open Android Studio in the new project window. Select the Empty Views activity. Hit Next. Give the project a name. I will call it First Gemini Tutorial. Make sure to, cho to choose Java and the minimum SDK should be 21 or higher. Press Finish. Now we are ready to start designing the app. The design is super simple. We will start by adding a scroll view because sometimes the model response is big and can't fit in the available space. Inside the linear layout, we will insert a text view, a text input layout, a button, a progress bar, and finally another text view. Let me zoom in a bit. The first text view will show to the user this message. So let's click on text, chat with Gemini. L now let's change other parameters. Let's search for text size. Let's make it 34 SP. Search for text alignment. Make it center. If you have a specific font family, you can do so. Uh, I'll just keep uh, the default. And finally, we will add a margin top of 32 dp. Okay, good. We are done with the text view. Let's move on to the text input layout. Let's start by adding a 64 dp margin to the top to separate the text input layout from the text view. Currently, the text input layout is touching the sides of the screen. To solve this problem, we will add 16 dp as padding to the start and end. 16 dp and 16 dp in the end. Now, expand the text input layout. Click on the text input edit text. Search for hint and set it to prompt. You can see the text now changes. Finally, give the text input edit text an ID so that we can use this view in the code. I will use query edit text. Next is the button. Let's change the text of the button to say send query. Search for text and replace it by send query. And let's give the button a width equal to 150 dp. 
Let's change the ID to something more informative like send prompt button refactor. Let's try to center the button. So let's search for gravity, expand layout gravity and click on center horizontal. Okay, so the button is now centered. And let's not forget to add some margin. Search for margin top, and I think 32 dp looks good to me. The next thing in the list is the progress bar. Initially, this view should not be visible. So, so search for visibility and make it gone so that we cannot see it. Let's add a 32 dp as margin. So search for margin top, set it to 32 dp and let's give it a, an ID. I will set the ID to send query or send prompt progress bar. Refactor one more time. Now, finally, we arrived at the final view in the list. This text view will show the model response. First, I will start by giving it model response text view as an ID. One more time, refactor. Then I will add some margins. Let's search for margin. Again, margin top it should be 32 dp. Let's add margin bottom 16 dp. And again, to prevent the text from touching the sides of the screen, I will add 30 dp padding. So search for 30 uh, padding and let's make it 30 dp at the start and end of the text view. Good job. If you followed all these steps, we have finished working on the design. Now let's start to have some fun. By Open the main activity class and start by instantiating our views. When I say views, I am referring to the text view, the text input edit text, the progress bar, the button, etc. As you can see, we have used the IDs that we had defined in the previous section to get the views. The next step is to use the Gemini model. For that, we will create a new class called Gemini Pro. Here, open the Java folder, the con.example, right click and click on Java class. As I said, I will name it Gemini Pro. And a very important note, the code that I will write inside this class has been inspired by Google's documentation. You can find it in this website. Please check the description if you want to, if you want to visit this website so that you can understand everything in details. You can see in this website that they are telling you what to do. And because we are going to use the Gemini model, so we need, we need to install some dependencies. So just copy these three lines of code, go back to your project, right cl click on the build.gradle build and down below, you can see you have all these dependencies. Just add the three lines of code that you have copied from the website that I have showed you earlier. Okay, if you do this, you are going to see this button that tells you to sync now. I'll click on it. And after this process finishes, we will be able to use or to access the Gemini model. As you can see, everything now has been installed. Close this file and now we are ready to move. Keep working on this Gemini Pro class. I will create a function that will give me the model. Let's call it getModel. This function returns a generative model futures. As I said, the method is called getModel. Inside the function, we will start by creating a new variable that will store the API key. Note, it is not a good idea to expose your API key, so make sure to put it somewhere for safety reasons. In my case, I will create a class called build config and here I will create 
a public static variable called API key. And here I will put my API key. So I will not show it in the video, but I will paste it here. Now I can safely create the API key. So I will use the build config class. And as you can see, I can access the API key like this. Next, we will change the safety settings of the model. To do that, we are going to use the safety settings class. And here you can specify the safety setting. Safety settings are used to block unsafe content across all dimensions. In our case, we will block only high unsafe content. After that, we will change the generation configuration like this. Here we are setting the temperature to be 0.9, the top K and top P. And after this, you can, as you can see, you can build these conf generation configuration so that we can use it when, when we want to instantiate the model. Finally, we can instantiate the model using this line of code. Okay, so here we are using Gemini Pro because this is the only available model that we can. We, ha we have Gemini Pro Vision, but here because we are using just text, we are going to use the Gemini Pro. You can see we are passing the API key as well as the configuration and the safety settings. And finally, as I said, this method returns a generative model futures. So we need to convert the generative model into generative model futures. And that's it. Now we have finished working on this function. So I'll collapse it. And inside the same class, I will add a new function that will take the query or prompt and return the response. I will call this function get response and it will return nothing. But wait a minute, you said that this function will return the response and you are using void? Yes, yes, I know. I did this because I will use an interface to return the result. Just wait for a minute. Inside the get response method, start by instantiating the Gemini model like this. You see, we are using the get model to give us the model. Then create the content. This class represents content sent to and received from the model. After that, we will create an executor using the following line of code. This line is creating an executor instance that will be used to run the callback methods when the future completes. You have many options for the executor. You can use thread pool executor or scheduled thread pool executors. You can use the fork joint pool or finally the single thread executor. Here I am using a very simple one, but you can experiment with the others. Now we are ready to receive the response. What I pasted here comes directly from the documentation. Basically, if everything went well, you will receive the response inside the onSuccess method. On the other hand, if something went wrong, the onFailure method will be called. The problem here is that we cannot return the response from within the onSuccess method. Let me show you. If I try to type in return result text, and let me change this to a string. Uh, let me see. So it is a generative content response. You can see that we have an error. Here it is telling me that you cannot return a value from a method with void the result type. Okay, so this is the problem. Here, if I try to change this to string, I will get another problem because I am overriding this function. You can see that it is saying is anonymous class derived from blah blah. So here you cannot do this. This is why I said in the beginning that even though this function needs to return the response, we, we cannot do that. And this is why I used void when declaring the function. To return the response, I will add an interface called response callback. So just delete this line. Here, let's cre create the interface. As I said, I will name it response callback. Make sure to, to choose interface and hit enter. Here I will create two functions inside this interface, the onResponse and the onError 
functions. Now go back to the Gemini Pro class. Add the response callback as a parameter or as an argument to the getResponse method. So I'll just name it callback. We will use this interface inside the onSuccess and onFailure methods. Inside the onSuccess method, add this line callback.onSuccess or onResponse and pass the resolve text. Similarly, go to the onFailure method and use the callback, but this time you need to call the onError method. We are done with this function and with the class. I hope that you are still with me and that you didn't get discouraged by what we have done so far. Close the Gemini Pro file as well as the interface and go back to the main activity. Now we will add the onClickListener event to our button. Send query button dot set on click listener. I will use the lambda expression. Inside we will create an instance of the Gemini Pro class, I will get the query from the input text and I will show the progress bar. Then we will reset the content of both the text input edit text and the text view. And finally, we will call the getResponse method. I will pass the query as well as the response callback. Okay. So this is how it looks like. Inside the onResponse, I will type in response text view dot set text. So remember, response text view is the text view that we have added here. Here we will show the model's response. After we after getting the response, we need to remove the progress bar. On the other hand, if we get an error, we will show a toast message. Also, don't forget to remove the progress bar. Good job. We have completed this section of the tutorial. Believe it or not, we are ready to start testing the application. And hopefully, if we didn't mess anything, we will get the same result as I showed you in the beginning of this tutorial. So let's make sure that your device is connected and run the application. Let's start testing the application. Here I will type something. What is the best programming language? Click on the send query button. You can see that the progress bar appear, is appearing, which is good. Let's wait for the model to give us the response. So as you can see, it's, it is saying there is no one best programming language, etc. So you can see that the scrolling view is working and the model gave the response and everything is good. Let's try to see, um, let's give it another, what is the tallest building on earth? You can see that the progress bar appears and we get the response, it's Burj Khalifa. So everything is working, this is great. We have reached the end of this tutorial. I hope that you have been able to replicate what I showed you and you learned something new thanks to this video. I have some other tutorials that I will work on. So if you are not subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so. Until then, see you next time.